in the name of Allah, the most beneficent and the most merciful. Assalamu alaikum students. We are back after the break of two days. I welcome you all to lecture number five. Before I begin, I do hope that you would have had a wonderful weekend. Well, gentlemen, in today's lecture, we are going to focus on two aspects of lesson number two. The first one, of course, is synonyms from the same lesson. And the second aspect is one-liner answers for which you need to go through the story at length. Otherwise, you won't be able to answer these particular questions. Well, students, a very crucial slide of synonyms is being displayed on your screens right now. And this is important not only for your exams, but also for you people to collect a new horde of words to speak English fluently and impressively. First of all, I would speak up the word, then I would give its synonyms. So let's begin with the first word. It is sting. As you can see, this is a verb. It can also be used as a noun. Its equivalent words are bite, prick, throb, pierce, and nip. Iske urdu mein mani hote hain, kaatna ya chubna. This bee stung her on her hand. The second word is stream. Its plural is made by adding s to it. Streams, it is, as you can see, this is a noun. Its equivalent words are pour, trickle, flow, roll, or drops of sweat. Sweat kehte hai pasine ko, pasine ki boonde ya pasine ke katre. Streams basically behte hoye pani ke liye istemal kiya jata hai, nadi ke liye ya jeel ke liye istemal kiya jata hai. The next word is a meadow. Its equivalent words are pasture, field, weld, welt, grazing. The fourth word is pronounced as welt. D is silent here. It is a noun. Iske urdu mein mani hoti hai. Sabza zar ya hara bara khet. The next word is wisp. It is a noun. At times can be used as a verb. Its equivalent words are tuft, handful, small. It basically shows the quantity of something, a very small amount of something, a handful of quantity of something. Worn out. This is an adjective, a very, very important adjective. Its equivalent are tested, exhausted, depleted, barren, or tired. Iske urdu mani hote hain, tabahal ya badhal. Next one is also a very important word, brag. It is a verb. Its second and third forms are bragged, bragged. Its equivalent words are boast, exult, flaunt, bluster, show off. Urdu mein isko kehte hain, fakhri andaz mein kuch kehna. Laugh marna, shekhi bikharna. Next one is a very simple word, hey. As you can see it, it is a noun. Its equivalent words are fodder, forage, grass, feed. He ko urdu mein chara ya busa kehte hain. Next word is wrestle. Wrestle is basically a verb. It can also be used as a noun. Its equivalent words are whisper, swish, whiz, hiss, and whistle. The rustling of leaves created a beautiful impact on the listeners. Sarsrat, patton ki sarsrat. Next one is rugged. Rugged, as you can see, is an adjective. Its equivalent words are uneven, rough, rocky, coarse, or jagged. Urdu mein isko kahenge sanglak, biaban ya banjar zameen. Next one is a very important word, fondle. As you can see, it is, is a verb. Its equivalent words are rub, caress, pat, cuddle, or pamper. Urdu mein isko kehte hain, atkeliyan karna, kisi ko pyaar se sehlana. 
या प्यार से किसी को छूना नेक्स्ट वन इज अगेन अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वर्ड ब्लफ ब्लफ बेसिकली इज अ नाउन इट कैन ऑल्सो बी यूज एज अ वर्ब यू मस्ट हैव हर्ड ब्लफ वाइल प्लेइंग कार्ड्स बिकॉज देर इज अ गेम ऑफ कार्ड्स ऑल्सो कॉल्ड ब्लफ सो इट इज बेसिकली अ नाउन इट्स इक्विलेंट वर्ड आर क्लिफ माउंट हेल साइड डिसीव और फीन ब्लफ के उर्दू माने होते हैं पहाड़ी चोटी क्लिफ हैंगर यू मस्ट हैव वर्ड द वर्ड क्लिफ हैंगर चोटी से लटकने वाला पहले तीन वर्ड्स तीन सनोनमस वर्ड्स इसको नाउन के तौर पर इंडिकेट कर रहे हैं फोर्थ एंड फिफ्थ वन इसको वर्ब के तौर पर इंडिकेट कर रहे हैं क्रियोसिटी इज अ कॉमन वर्ड इट इज अ नाउन इट्स अक्विलेंट वर्ड आर इनक्विजिटिवनेस इंटरेस्ट नोजीनेस सस्पेंस और ईगरनेस और कीननेस द नेक्स्ट वर्ड इज विल्डरनेस बाय द वे क्रियोसिटी को उर्दू में तजस कहेंगे नेक्स्ट वर्ड इज विल्डरनेस इट इज अ नाउन इट्स अक्विलेंट वर्ड आर वेस्ट लैंड शैम्बल्स और अ डिजर्टेड प्लेस उर्दू में इसको वैराना या ब्याबान या बंजर जमीन या खिता या मकाम कहते हैं लिम्ब लिम बेसिकली इज अ नाउन इट्स प्लूरल विल बी लिम्स बाय एडिंग एस इट्स अक्विलेंट वर्ड आर ब्रांचेस बोज ट्विग्स एटसेट्रा लिम्ब बाय द वे अगर किसी इंसान के लिए यूज करेंगे तो इससे मुराद होती है उसके हाथ या टांगे बाजू या टांगे अगर परिंदों के लिए इस्तेमाल करेंगे तो उस सूरत में उससे मुराद होती है उसके विंग्स और अगर दरख्तों या पौधों वगैरह के लिए इस्तेमाल करेंगे तो इससे मुराद होती है उसकी एक्सटेंडेड ब्रांचेस या बोज टहनियाँ जो इर्द गिर्द फैली हुई होती हैं सो ये थी हमारी स्लाइड पहली स्लाइड सिनेम्स की अब हम नो वी मूव ऑन टू द सेकेंड स्लाइड आई होप यू वुड राइट ऑल द मीनिंग्स ऑफ दीज वर्ड्स इन योर कॉपीज एज वेल एज लर्न एंड मेमोराइज दैम वेल जिनमेन वी आर ऑन टू आर थर्ड स्लाइड सेकेंड ऑफ दिनेम्स द फर्स्ट वर्ड इन दिस स्लाइड इज trunk trunk as you can see is a noun its equivalent words are stem stalk shaft or stump isko urdu mein tana kehte hain the trunk of the tree was huge next one is an extremely important word has been repeated many times in previous board exams you need to listen it very carefully it is pronounced as curtly curtly is an adverb adverb of manner its synonymous words are abruptly brusquely tersely briefly or shortly urdu mein iske ise kahenge mukhtasar tareen chhota brief next one is fro i have explained this word in detail while i was translating the important paragraphs from lesson number 2 anyhow it is a noun can also be used as a verb channel groove crease line wrinkles or a narrow passage basically wo lines creases या रिंकल्स जो चेहरे पर उम्र के बढ़ने के साथ साथ नमदार होना शुरू हो जाती हैं उनको फरो कहा जाता है और अगर खेत में हल चलाया जाए तो हल चलाने के नतीजे में जो छोटी सी नालियाँ बन जाती हैं उसको भी फरो कहते हैं उनको हम नैरो पैसेजेस या चैनल्स भी कहते हैं द नेक्स्ट वन इज लम्बा इट इज अनाउन एंड ऑल्सो अवॉब its equivalent words are timber planks wood stump beam or pillar iska matlab hai shahtir 
گارڈر کا لفظ آپ نے سنا ہوگا پرانے وقتوں میں لکڑی کے بڑے بڑے پیم ڈالے جاتے تھے چھت پر تو اس کو پلر کہتے ہیں لمبر کہتے ہیں شیطیر کہتے ہیں وف ڈبلیو ایچ آئی ڈبل ایف which is a verb as well as a noun its equivalent words are breathe, inhale, puff, sniff or smell whiff ke maani hote saans andar ki taraf khenchna ko gehri saans lena inhale karna gradually gradually is an adverb it means slowly, steadily, bit by bit step by step slowly but surely aista aista aur darja ba darja next word is brace which is a verb as well as a noun its equivalent words are support stay prepare prop or reinforcement iska matlab hota hai help lena madad lena ya taiyar rehna next one is an important word it is pronounced as loam l o a m loam it is a noun its equivalent words are soil clay dirt silt or dust retli mati ya retli zameen ko kehte hain silty soil next one is wound ya wound wound is entirely some other word whereas wound is something different it is an adjective noun and can also be used as verb its equivalent words are twisting and turning tortuous injury cut hurt or zigzag by the way aapko ye yaad rakhna chahiye ki yahi word isi spelling ke sath uska matlab hota hai zakham injury cut ka nishan his wounds are healing his wounds will heal soon to yahan par iska matlab hai ye noun hai aur iska matlab hoga zakham ya zakham ka nishan jabki ye verb ke taur par istemal karenge to iska first form hoti hai wind w i n d he is winding his watch aur uski second aur third form honge wound wound is ka matlab hota hai bal khata hua twisting and turning tortuous pehle dono word jo hain wo isko adjective ke taur par show kar rahe hain dusre dono isko noun ke taur par show kar rahe hain aur fifth word isko verb ke taur par show kar raha hai the next word is sift sift is an important word it is a verb its equivalent words are filter sieve separate scrutinize or examine iska matlab hai chhalni karna chhanna jaise aata chhante hain chhalni mein se next word is wink w i n k which is a verb flash blink or glint i can answer your question in a blink of an eye bahut thode time mein so i hope i would have conveyed all the words and their meanings i would expect you to write them down and memorize them thoroughly because they are going to help you a lot not only for your exams but also for you to speak english fluently thank you gentlemen now we would move on to the next slide in which we are going to cover the one liner questions well gentlemen now we have moved on to the fourth slide of today's lecture this is titled as one liner questions from lesson number 2 well this is again a very important slide these questions are purposefully designed to make you read the whole story extensively and if you don't read the story you won't be able to answer these questions the purpose to make you read the story is that there can be many other mcqs from the text itself so if you have not gone through the story you won't 
be knowing the answers of these MCQs either. So I hope you understand my point of view. Therefore, you would go through the story thoroughly. Well, we begin with question number one. What is the relation of Jess Stewart to the old man? The first thing you need to know that who is Jess Stewart. Number two, what had the writer brought for his mother? Number three, how many children did the old man have? Question number four, how many doctors did the old man visit via from January until April? Question number five, how many miles did the old man walk from the other side of the hill to his home? Number six, how many years did the old man take to improve his land? Number seven, in which month the rabbits were ripe? Number eight, what kind of tree did the old man once find in his woods? Number nine, how many times did the old man stop while climbing the second steep bluff? Number ten, who did the old man fence the land against? Number eleven, name the vegetables the old man grew on his farm. Number 12. Name the crops the old man grew on his land. Here you have to create a distinction between vegetables and crops. Well, gentlemen, this slide is going to cover the rest of the questions, rather one-liner questions, from this lesson. The first question in this slide is what age according to Bible a man is blessed with? I repeat what age according to Bible a man is blessed with in this world? Number 14 is what was the age of the old man and his wife when they cleared the land? Number 15 what did the old man plow his land with? You need to understand the statement of this question. What did the old man plow his land with? Number 16. What was the age of the son when his father made him a wooden plow? Number 17. What did the son do with the plow? What did the son do with the plow? Last and 18th question is What was the height of some of the trees of the mountain? What was the height of some of the trees at the mountain? Well, gentlemen, this was the end of our lecture number 5. With this, we are about to conclude lesson number two which is one of the most important lessons in your book one in tomorrow's lecture we are going to take up the short questions from this lesson uh, again that would be a very very important lecture so i hope you would be ready for it take good care of yourself khuda hafiz